to determining it today? I think that's a million dollar question. <laughs> and the reason it's um, a difficult one to answer is because one of the things that I remember when we used to buy uh, digital media as opposed to television, we were constantly told this, this is one of the most measured media there is. You know, you can make out how many people are watching the ad, how many people are clicking through it, how many people are going to a page. The truth is the linkage between the metrics that you can measure and the metrics that matter, like business, are really, really soft. They work really well in worlds where you can, for example, direct them to a telecom site and make them recharge their coupons or take them to Bajaj Electricals and make them buy something. But it's really hard to say uh, how the awareness models are linking to offline sales. And this is one of our biggest challenges as uh, FMCG companies. There are various models which are coming to play. We are seeing, uh, I think, Everyone's trying to work on this world of what we're calling equivalency. I think video equivalence or any equivalence is just to make the old marketer like me who understands GRP uh, make me comfortable, saying, yeah. you know, okay, if you put it on YouTube, you will get so many GRP GRPs, equivalents. Yeah. But the reality is it's about reach and it's about, uh, uh, you know, frequency or awareness. And as long as you can measure reach independent of say another medium like TV, you should be able to measure the outcome. And it's becoming increasingly uh, better, but I think there's still a long way to go establishing these linkages. That's an interesting observation, Shomnath. How do you uh, therefore look at in a category like yours where apart from the premium product category, maybe uh, the commoditization has taken in. So today I go to a retail outlet and I start comparing the price, what the retailer is telling me with various online apps that I have, right? So how do you operate in that environment? Uh, Ranja, before I speak into this topic, I would like to give you a general perspective about how a marketer thinks about whether it is a traditional marketing or digital marketing. And in my opinion, traditional marketing and digital marketing, the relationship is like that of a husband and wife. The role keeps changing depending on the industry that you are into. Right. Okay. Today you will see there are industry like say real estate rental business. Like say, you know, for example, movie business. They are mostly into digital marketing. Whereas if you talk about say a premium medical equipment business or aerospace engine business, they are purely into offline marketing. So depending upon which, whatever category of business that you are into, this marketing strategy will change and the marketing spent of your company will change. So how are you determining how much you should put in digital marketing as a budget out of the entire mix? Like Anuradha just mentioned that, you know, this is a million dollar questions in every company that you go marketers are struggling to find the exact answer. And frankly speaking, we do not have an exact answer to these questions. But having said that, I was just reading the recent FIKI KPMG report, which has just come out. It talks about like 2015, the digital spend has grown by almost 38.2 percentage over last year, and which overs almost like 60 billion rupees. And it also talks about that in next four to five years, the figure is going to touch somewhere around 250 billion Indian rupees. So that means we're talking about multiplying four times in next four years. So definitely in that context, if you look at digital media is going to play a very, very significant role in the times to come, irrespective of whichever industry you are into. That's, that's how I look at it. Okay. So let's look at telecom then, Siddharth. In your category, I think uh, there's immense money getting spent in both traditional media as well as digital media, right? So therefore, how are you uh, allocating uh, the priority in terms of what each of these media should def deliver? Uh, or in terms of product placement or product association, are you experimenting with various products and therefore saying traditional media will push these products while digital media can, you know, deliver these kind of KPIs for us? Or is it that you are looking at it from a completely across the board uh, 
entire portfolio of products and therefore a typical marketing mix of uh, traditional, digital, and the rest. Okay. Um, so first and foremost, this term of digital marketing makes me uncomfortable. There is actually nothing called digital marketing. Uh, I've said it uh, earlier, uh, and I'm going to say it again. There is only marketing in a digital world. So consumers have started consuming more digital content. They are on more digital media. They are on more screens than they were in the, in the past few years. And so therefore, suddenly we are talking about digital marketing. But I'd like to point out to the fact that if marketers, and because this is a marketing forum, if marketers want to navigate the world where consumers have moved to a digital world, some of the things which will pretty much stay constant. And before we come to budgets, uh, if marketers don't know the value of consumer insights, then whether it is the so-called traditional marketing or the so-called digital marketing, which are actually uh, kind of misnomers in themselves, they won't be able to uh, uh, navigate. So the first thing that I believe, uh, honestly, that there is nothing called digital marketing and therefore there is nothing called digital marketing budgets. It depends upon where your consumers are, what your marketing task is, what you're trying to do with them. So for example, in our case, uh, in telecom, there are two primary jobs that we have uh, when it comes to reaching to consumers. One is building our brand, uh, which we do through a mix of what we can call traditional media and what we can call digital media. But the way I look at it is, where the, what is the consumer looking at it? For example, we've just launched a youth brand um, in Vodafone. It's a brand called Vodafone U, very early days yet, a few weeks out in the market. Uh, are we looking at it the same way that we look at the mother brand Vodafone? Not at all. Because the target consumer for Vodafone U, the new youth brand, is completely different. It's very focused. It's 18 to 24 year olds, urban, uh, college going, or first jobbers. Yeah? So the way to reach to them, the way to market to them, the way to engage them will be completely different. The second bit that we do uh, is about selling our products and services. And uh, of course, a lot of us know about that in terms of performance. And there we have perhaps a little bit of more hard-coded metrics, like uh, Anuradha was saying, which can lead from pure awareness uh, and close the loop uh, to online sales. So you can actually see the result of that. So the second bit is a little bit more hard-coded, uh, perhaps, in an industry like telecom. The first bit is the interesting bit. What are you going to do in such mediums that you are kind of unused to playing with? Which is what brings me to my second fundamental belief that no one actually, no one in this room, no one in this jury, no one really is an expert at marketing in a digital world. We are all students. We are all struggling with trying to understand how do we market to consumers in a digital world. Because by the way, consumers have moved much faster than marketers have. Uh, and so therefore, um, what is it that we can do uh, to kind of catch up with them, learn, engage with them, uh, that's perhaps uh, what my effort is as a marketer and the efforts of my marketing team and my partner agencies. How do we do that? I think one constant mantra, at least that plays for me and works for me, is experimentation. We are constantly in experimentative mode with respect to marketing to consumers in a digital world. For some of us in the room, you might have seen that Vodafone tried something during the IPL, which just concluded over April and May. Uh, we ran things like uh, there was a Vodafone super cheer called Hakke Bakke. Now that's entirely digital. Yeah? Uh, we ran this crowdsourced uh, largest online fan album um, where consumers clicked photographs with the much loved Zuzus and put it all together onto a digital album. And we are doing that along with the Guinness Book of World Records. Um, again, a very, very digital led engagement activity uh, because TV media does not allow me to do stuff like that. But at the same time, we deployed traditional TV, if you may, um, for uh, a big network campaign called Supernet, where we spoke about the fact that you could be a super dad, you could be a super brother, et cetera, et cetera, which a lot of consumers saw and loved. So coming back, it's basically about the target audience, the marketing task uh, that you want to do, and therefore the choice uh, that you really want to do in terms of uh, uh, media and therefore the budgets. What I would spend on mother brand Vodafone, the percentage of that would be fundamentally different to what I would spend as a percentage of my media budget on Vodafone U, which is a segmented youth brand. 
And that's the way at least that I would look at marketing to consumers in a digital world. So just what you said with combining with some points that Anuradha mentioned, it's a very interesting thing that today, if you look at it, the traditional media, TV, GRP, for example, what Anuradha mentioned, took about 40 years to make the marketeers comfortable in terms of assigning a responsibility and then accountability of the spend to a certain action, right? Digital and the way the dynamic platforms are growing is completely like you rightly said, you are experimenting with various mechanisms. So how do you assign accountability? How do you assign or allocate that this is what I'm looking for from this particular platform? Is there already certain matrices you are developing or is it purely on an experimentation basis? I think my digital dashboard is far more complicated and far more comprehensive than let's say my television dashboard and stands to reason. Um, so when we advertise with specific partner platforms, let's say like Google or Facebook, uh, first and foremost, we get into annual joint business plans with them. So we are basically talking about what is it that we can do together to build brands in a world where consumers are uh, in, an, in an online digital world. And therefore, we look at stuff like brand lift studies, uh, combining it with a couple of metrics that give us some clue about whether if I advertised uh, a specific piece of content, if I boosted it by a certain percentage, what is it really leading to in terms of engagement metrics, in terms of awareness indices, um, and we try and combine that with what's happening in terms of stuff like brand consideration, what's happening in terms of what consumers are decoding in terms of social sentiment. So there is this, like Anuradha spoke about, the attempt to do equivalence in terms of a measure, which is a la the GRP, the TV GRP, but also equated to uh, is my source of awareness coming from digital? Yeah, so all my brand uh, surveys now have source of awareness of digital platforms as well. Like we used to do in the earlier days, um, there used to be source of awareness, TV, cinema, outdoor, radio. Now we've kind of broken it down by digital platforms to say that where are you learning about this brand from? Yeah, and it's by key platforms on which we uh, invest our uh, ANP monies on. That's the first bit. The second bit is in terms of establishing equivalence in terms of if we have put specific investments behind targeted platforms, are we actually working along with those platforms? And some of that is actually getting ratified by third party agencies to say whether that investment is yielding me the desired marketing outcomes. Okay. That's, I think, fantastic in terms of the way